Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today I'm bringing you something that I have never done in Diablo 4 and that is a build guide. Now normally I like to leave the builds to our theory crafters out there but I have discovered a build so strong in season 1 that I need to share it with all of you. So with that let us jump right into the video. Alright, so before we get into the actual build part, I want to go ahead and talk about what this build is. Now this is the Necromancer build that actually uses your minions. Now one of the things that I hated about preseason was that Necromancers didn't use their minions. And I couldn't blame them. The benefits were far too great to, use your, to not use your minions and to sacrifice them. And I just kind of made a no exceptions rule going into this season that I want to use my minions. I want to see them in combat. I want them to be useful and I want them to actually be doing damage. I don't have to build around them so that they work. I want them to be a vital part of this build. And I think I have accomplished that in probably the best way that you can. So with that, let us jump right into it, into our skill tree. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is our basic skill. Now, you're not going to use this a ton. Basically, what this does is when you swing it, it's going to just basically drop a corpse. That's all we're really using it for. It's just to create the first couple corpses. Now, after we create one or two corpses, this build is going to continually make them thanks to our minions and a couple other aspects that we don't need to use this a whole lot. Now, I will say in content, like especially overworld content or in trash mobs in dungeons, the reap ability will kill most things most light level enemies if you swing this one or two times they'll be low enough health where they will just die and so overall this is a good clearing just to go through you don't want to waste your you know your energy your stuff like that on you know just trash mobs so this is a pretty good ability overall but now we get into the damage dealer of this class and now I know I said this was a minion class but it is a hybrid minion class and I'll specify we are working together basically to become the ultimate shadow mage and how this is going to work is our minions we're going to get them to do as much shadow damage as they can and not only are they doing shadow damage they're going to be buffing our shadow damage they're going to be combining together and overall we are just going to be a warrior of darkness basically so how sever works is it is going to send a spectral image of yourself with a scythe out and it's going to do huge damage and with our aspects is actually going to do two passes forward and backwards to yourself now this is a ranged attack so you don't have to be on top of them even though with this build you're most likely going to be very close to the enemies now with the supernatural sever it actually deals two percent increased damage for each minion you have for each minion excuse me that you have active and as you can see we have a lot of minions active so that is a very nice chunk of extra damage now before we move on here we are using hued flesh which is just it's just more chances for t for us to create corpses overall it's just it's really nice to have 12 percent chance to just create a corpse when you're doing damage super helpful to keep our you know resource up and everything going i highly recommend it now as we move down here to our second big damage dealer which is corpse explosion i know what you guys are thinking this looks very much like a build from preseason, just without just with minions but it is not. This build can play completely different than preseason. I'm very excited to show you that. So Corpse Explosion, we're going to be using this a lot, but we are not going to actually be casting it, which I'll show you in a second. We just have this on our bar and we never have to touch it. That is the coolest thing about this build is the only buttons you'll ever press are Reap, Sever, Iron Maiden, and to raise your skeleton, but we're not actually gonna be raising them. We're gonna be summoning the priestess that is going to buff them. So that is it for abilities. Four. That's kind of crazy that we're leaving two abilities that we never touch, but they're going to be going active all of the time. So with this, we want to just go ahead and get Blighted Corpse Explosion. This makes it a shadow ability. It's basically going to be doing darkness damage and shadow damage, and that's what we want. We're trying to stack as much shadow and damage over time as we can. Now, we're going to throw one point into Grim Harvest just to get to Field by Death, where this is basically just going to be a constant 9% increase, and this is going to be a constant 45 increase to damage and life of our skeletons. Now, as we move down Iron Maiden, this is huge. We are actually going to use both curses in this build. And now you may be thinking, how are we using both curses if we don't have any points in Decrepify? That is thanks to the new um, heart that is in Season 1, which sadly should be disappearing after Season 1, so we won't be able to do this anymore. But it is going to automatically cast Decrepify on anything around us, and I'll show you that aspect. Now we're going to put one point into Iron Maiden and then Enhanced and then Abhorrent. Now here you have a choice. If you are struggling to stay alive and you need more life in your battles, go with Abhorrent. If you are um, good on life, you're surviving, and you want a little bit more damage, go for Horde. Now right now, I'm starting out in Tier 4 at level 59. I'm taking a lot of damage, so I need this right now. But once I'm a little bit more survivable, a little bit more leveled up, we're going to be switching to Abhorrent. 
Now we do have this passive right here, which is basically just 12% constant damage as everything will be cursed. Then we have Death's Embrace, as with this build, enemies are going to be close to you all the time. And so you're just going to deal basically 6% six more, 6 more damage and take 9% less. That's a great passive for us. And this is more a 60% increase to damage and life of our mages, which is huge as we have quite a few mages. Now, as we go down here to Corpse Tendrils, this is going to be huge because this is probably the peer staple of this build, as we are not going to be casting it. And it's going to be automatically cast and every enemy near us is going to be pulled to us. This is going to work out great. You're able to clear rooms with literally one click of a button. It is absolutely amazing. And we do have a few passes here. Enhanced and then into Plagued. Basically, this is just going to make the enemies vulnerable. They're taking more damage, higher crits, higher damage. Everything is better. Now, we're spending a lot of points in this passive tree to buff our shadow damage. So start off just one point in Reaper's Pursuit to get into the tree. And then three points in Gloom for extra damage. And then another three points in Terra for more damage. And then two points in this for a stun. So basically in this build, we are going to be constantly slowing, stunning, and immobilizing enemies. And when we do that, not only does it make it easier for us because they aren't moving, but we are doing more damage to them when that happens. So overall, this is a great place to spend your points. Now, as we move down, we are going to spend some points here to work on the survivability and damage of our minions. Yes, we're not forgetting about them. Now we want to spend one point into Inspiring Leader, and this basically just gives your minions more attack speed when they are alive. Overall, a great one. Wish we could spend more points here, but sadly, we just don't have enough. Now we do want to max out Hellbent Commander, as this is just a straight 30% increased damage as we are always near our minions. And again, we want to spend two, sadly not three. Um, and, this, and basically how this works is when your minions are taking damage, um, the Skeleton Priest gives them a damage buff, but also heals them slowly over time. But with this, every five skill, every five seconds, it will heal them for 40% of their max life. And with how our build plays, the first thing we summon is the skeleton, is the skeleton priestess, sorry. And so five minutes into the fight, there or five seconds into the fight, they're gonna be in a 40% increase to their health, keeping them alive through the fight. Overall, my minions never die with this because I'm summoning the priestess so often, they're constantly getting topped up on health on top of the huge amount of damage buffs that they get from the priest. Now, for our key passives, we are going to move with Shadow Blight, of course, as we are doing shadow damage. Now, this is really important, and it, and it stacks with a lot of aspects, giving us a chance for some huge damage with the Shadow Blight key passive. Um, overall, Shadow Blight's great. I honestly, I think this is definitely the strongest key passive in the game overall. And now, one thing I do want to cover is you've probably seen here, we don't have an ultimate, and that is for design. I don't think any of the Necromancer ultimates are all that great. Now, as you've probably seen, a lot of builds nowadays are using Bone Storm. And while Bone Storm, I definitely think, is the best ultimate to use, in this build, it just doesn't really have a place. It's not really our play style, and I personally don't like it all that well. I would much rather save those points and put them somewhere else. So with that covered, I do want to quickly cover our Book of the Dead, where, as you can see, I know this is a minion build, but we are sacrificing the Golem. I do want to cover that first. I would love to use the golem i really would but the problem is is that takes another ability slot and that's just ability slot that we don't have we'd be missing out on too much damage to use the golem i do really wish they would change that and make it so that we didn't have to use this ability slot with the golem it just makes it really hard to use and honestly unless you're running like a thorns build i don't see the golem being worth it overall so we're going to go with iron and sacrifice it for an extra 30 percent critical strike which is great now, the other two we are using, of course, Reaper, definitely the strongest of the skeletons with a chance to form corpse. Overall, the more corpses we get, the more damage we do. So that is amazing for us. And then we have the skeletal mages. Of course, we're going to do the shadow damage. We're trying to do shadow. And then mages fire an additional uh, shadow bolt every fourth attack. That's great for us. More damage. Now, if you're having problems with enemies not being stunned, which really with this build, you shouldn't, you could use this, but overall we have so much stun, we don't need it. So we're just gonna go for a little bit extra damage in our build. Now, I do wanna take a quick second and look at some of the hearts and some of the legendary attributes that are required in this build. And one of the biggest ones I would say is this legendary aspect. Your skeletons gain increased damage while alive up to 30% after 10 seconds. This, I think, is probably the most important legendary aspect in the build as it just gives your skeletons a ton of damage, 30%. They're always alive, so that's always going to be maxed out at 30%. And this is just a straight 30% increase of damage, and they do a ton of damage. So this is absolutely necessary in this build. Now, also attached on this is, is the heart that is absolutely required. 
this bill will not work without this heart. So basically what happens when you walk near a corpse, it automatically activates any corpse skill per second, and it does do 33% less damage. But overall, that's not going to matter because we are casting it way more often than we could by hand. So that 33% really isn't a thing for us, thankfully. Now, how this works is basically it's going to cast the corpse skills left to right in priority. So as we have raised skeleton first, it will actually raise skeletons for us, but it will not raise them if they are full. So it will not summon the priestess. So we have to summon the priestess manually. But the reason I have this farthest to the left is it will make sure that if a skeleton dies, the next thing that will be cast is to raise that skeleton. Now, next we have corpse explosion. Now, this is huge because in corpse explosion does a ton of damage. Now, overall, what this does is it's going to explode and leave a huge puddle of basically shadow damage AOE that's going to tick over time, over six seconds, and it does a huge amount of damage. And with this legendary, or sorry, with this unique that I got today, it is even better, but we'll touch on that in just a second. And then we have corpse tendrils last. So basically how this works with the ring is that it'll make sure our skeletons are full, which they should be all the time. It's gonna cast corpse explosion. And then when corpse explosion can't be cast anymore, that it's on cooldown, is going to go to corpse tendrils. So how does this work actually in the game? You're gonna see about two to three corpse explosions go off and then a corpse tendril, and it's gonna rotate. And it works out really, really well. So basically there's gonna be a huge puddle of damaging AOE. It's going to grab everybody, pull it into that puddle, and it's gonna drop more puddles on them. Overall, this is the best setup I found. It does absolutely insane damage, and it is so enjoyable to see the whole room sucked into a vat of damage and just die and get obliterated. Overall, great fun. Now, this is what I wanna spend some time talking about. This is amazing. And now looking at it, you might think, you know, corpse explosions, they raise a volatile skeleton. We're not using volatile skeleton. So how is this useful? The volatile skeleton doesn't really matter. The big thing is it increases our damage by 31%. Now, if you pay attention, 31%, that pretty much negates the cost of using it for this. So now we're doing a full scaled, full fledged attack corpse explosion. That's a lot of damage. Okay. And, but it does something else. It doesn't say it in this, but when this goes off and it summons the volatile skeleton, when the skeleton explodes, not only does it explode and do damage, a pretty decent amount of damage, it drops another corpse explosion. So this is doubling the amount of corpse explosions that go off and increasing the damage by 31%. This is absolutely amazing. This makes this build so much stronger. I felt 10 times stronger after equipping this. And I just got this today. Sadly, it is a sacred, so I am gonna have to farm it again in an ancestral form, hopefully that I can get it. But this is amazing. I cannot recommend this enough. Now I do wanna cover just a few more legendary aspects as they can be pretty helpful. This is another good one. Basically, increase critical strike when you use corpse tendrils and it deals more damage. Overall, this is great. Um, this, I don't love this one. Right now I need it because of World Tier 4 and it's really hurting and the monsters do a lot of damage. But overall, this is going to change in the future and that's why I want to get this build out here now because this build is amazing for leveling. This has been, let's see, as of recording, it has been about 18 hours since launched Diablo and I'm level 59. So just over a day and a half, or excuse, yeah, about a day and a half counting sleep, it's the next day. Um, and level 59, so this is actually pretty crazy. And there's a few more legendary aspects. So these two next ones are really, really important as well. So skeletal mage is increased by two. Now it just gives you two more minions, but if you remember some of our aspects, they actually scale off the number of minions that we have. So plus two is a lot of actual damage percentage. And then we have another plus two because we have two different types. Now overall, these two are extremely important. I, these will definitely be in the um, end game build. So will this, and then so will this one. Now, the others, they aren't perfect right now. This is actually a really nice one for, you know, just to make yourself a little bit tankier. Basically, seven or more minions, 19% in increased damage reduction. Great one just to survive a little bit more and not be so squishy. As you can see on the pants, I don't even have a legendary aspect. As you can see, I'm trying to, to level up and perfect this build, and you will, guys will see the future one. Now, this one is actually pretty huge. This is what allows us to do crazy crit damage on bosses. So basically, you deal 200% increased damage multiplicative for six seconds after the Shadow Blight key passive. So I showed you the Shadow Blight key passive. Basically, after you get that to tick 10 times, you do 200% increased damage for six seconds. Now, you see this the most on bosses. 
as really when you're fighting mobs, everything is going to die before you usually get that full 10 stacks. So really, this is for bossing, and it absolutely melts bosses. You'll see crits into the millions once you get into World Tier 4 with this. This absolutely changes the build, and it is amazing. Now, lastly, I do want to cover how this build is actually played. So basically how this is going to work is when you go into a group of enemies, you're going to cast Reap a few times to just drop a couple of corpses. Now, after you drop corpses, corpses, excuse me, corpse explosion and corpse tendrils are going to start going off automatically. So what do you actually need to do since half of this build is automated? All you have to do is raise a skeleton. So grab a corpse. There should be plenty on the ground. Grab a corpse, you know, just hit one or hold one. It'll raise a skeleton. This is going to make sure your minions stay alive, but it's also going to give you a huge damage buff. Now, after you raise a skeleton, you want to make sure you drop Iron Maiden. Now, this does not use any resource at all, so just drop it on everyone in the room. And about this time, everyone should start getting pulled towards you. Now, thanks to a couple of our abilities, we're going to actually be casting our second curse, Decrepify, automatically because it is a swirling AoE around us. So now everything is double cursed. It is being ticked over time by shadow damage, and it is all vulnerable. Now, really easy, you just pop in a couple severs and everything dies. Even high level named elites, they will get absolutely melted by this. Now today in world tier three, we were farming some, I believe they were tier 18 nightmare dungeons. We actually had the butcher spawn. And sadly I wasn't recording for this, but me and one other person, we were able to kill the butcher in about four seconds thanks to this build right here, this build. It absolutely destroyed the butcher. I had a bunch of corpses spawned up from killing everything super buffed up i got that you know shadow blight buff and i absolutely destroyed the butcher in tier 3 in an 18 nightmare dungeon now overall this build is amazing i hope you guys enjoy it and you will see future videos and you will see videos in the future with an updated guide on the legendary aspects or anything that changes as i progress through world tier 4 and on to 100. so with that thank you everybody for watching i hope you guys have a good time and i hope you guys enjoyed the build and make sure to leave any feedback in the comments you know i am not a perfect yo know, theory crafter or build crafter i do like to build my own builds but overall i am not an expert at this by any means but i think i have found a very very strong and fun build for the people that actually want to use their summons on necromancer now with that, thank you everyone for watching and I hope to see you guys in a future video.